Okay, so, we are going to start the next session. I remember we talked about diversity and how we are going to manage diversity okay, so that people can work together without any discrimination and then we also discuss some of the initiatives that can be done for managing diversity at the workplace. Now, what we are going to discuss in this session is uh, what kind of ethical pra practices or behavior need to be inculcated in the people okay, and what role HRD can play in the process. Right, that is very very important. Okay, and so in this uh, lecture, we are going to talk about the role of HRD in the ethics. Okay, uh, we will start our discussion uh, primarily by discussing about ethics, and then we will discuss about what is the role of HRD in the in inculcating ethical behavior in the person. Now, if you look at this figure, uh, you will find that we are talking about three things. So, on the one side, we have corporate social responsibility, we have sustainable development and we also have ethics. So, HRD might be having a role in all these activities whether it is developing ethical behaviors, uh, making sure that people or organizations go for these kind of activities okay, which will help for sustainable development. Right? So, to start with first of all we will talk about the role of HRD in the ethics. Right? So, first of all we need to understand what is ethics or business ethics. Right? Now, if you look at uh, this business ethics as a subject, uh, here we are not going to discuss it, but we are going to discuss it in the context of what role HRD has to play. Right? So, if you look uh, the concept of business ethics or the study okay, of business ethics is to see that organizations follow certain ethical practices in their behavior in terms of products, processes and services. Right? So, when you are going to take any decision or organizations are going to take any decisions related to what kind of activities they are going to have, what kind of decisions they are going to make, how it is going to impact people, not only people, but also the environment apart from profit, because uh, most of the decisions that is taken by the organizations are in the perspective of profit, but at the same time you also need to look at it that what is your responsibility as a entity as an organization as an inter, uh, enterprise as an entity to ensure that your decisions are not going to affect the individual in, in the organization or outside like consumers, people in the community and society and the environment in which the society and the organization operates. Right? And that is very, very important. So, this issue of whether, whether you are right or wrong needs to be addressed irrespective of what you do. Right. So, sometimes what happens you know that uh, most of the organizations try to bypass these kind of things. Okay. They try to attempt to do things which could not be legal forget about being ethical right? and that is where the problem comes. So, you try to adopt certain systems practices and processes which are neither ethical nor legal. Okay. So, the idea of having ethical training is to ensure that organization people in the organizations understand what is unethical behavior, what is unethical activity right? and in what way it is going to affect people. Okay? So, the idea is to ensure against unethical behavior organizations need to develop. Okay? So, what kind of systems and practices that you need to develop, what kind of regulatory systems you require, what kind of model code you require like you know the most of the organizations have code of conduct also we will talk about it, which define certain guidelines okay, that in what we are going to behave. For example, you know that there are code of conduct for doctors, okay. there are code of conduct for teachers also okay. and that suggests that okay, this is how we are going to behave in ethical manner. Right? So, these we have to ensure that uh, using these regulatory practices or code of conduct people do not behave unethically okay, or they do not engage in those practices and systems by the organization which could be called unethical in nature. Right, And that is why it is very, very important to understand that what role HRD can play in making sure that people are going to be have ethically through training or other interventions or through ad, uh, identifying certain practices and code of conduct which is going to guide their behavior. Right? And, that, the, and that is why in this context we are going to discuss about ethics. So, the most important thing is yeah, it has to be voluntary. It means that people should understand what is right and wrong, and that is what we know as code of conduct or code of ethics. Okay. 
So, that actually tells that how people behave okay, when they are going to carry out the responsibility. Are they going to behave in ethical manner or unethical manner? Okay. So, you know that it is not a regulatory system which is going to regulate and control your behavior because it, uh, your behavior can also be controlled by law. Okay. But it is always good to have a code of conduct because it is better. Okay. It symbolizes that okay, the interest of the profession is to be protected at all costs first and then you have to see that you are going to promote behaviors among the people which is acceptable ethically, morally and legally. If, right? So, you are going to develop certain guidelines, you are going to provide certain frameworks or norms to ensure that people are going to behave accordingly. right? And then you should communicate these code of conduct to the people, so that they know that this is how they are going to behave while they are going to work and carry out their responsibilities. So, moving from code of conduct, we have to see that what kind of role HRD has to play when it comes to developing this kind of behavior. Okay. So, one thing that I can say that yes, HRD has a very important role to play, okay, because they can promote CSR, sustainability practices, even business ethics in the organization. Okay. So, if you really want to understand that what is the role of HRD in CSR, uh, corporate sustainability and ethics, uh, it is good to see that what is the, uh, the tri triple bottom line model. You might most, most of you are aware about this, okay, where we talk about uh, people, profit and planet. Okay. So, this is the model that has been used to explain the role of HRD in CSR, CS and ethics. And you can the, the, uh, develop yourself on a sustainable basis only when there is a balanced attention to all these three factors that is the triple bottom line. Okay. You are not only concerned about profit, but you are also equally concerned about community and society that, that is people and also the environment because right, that is very very important. Okay. So, we have to see that in what way it is going to interact with HRD right? all the three elements of the triad that is CSR, CS and ethics and what role it has. So, before we move further, now we look at this, so, this is what basically triple bottom line is people, profit and planet. Okay. Profit actually is economic variable, okay. right. planet is a variable related to the environment okay. that how we are going to exploit natural resources and what is uh, whether we are going to help in improving water quality, air quality, energy conversion, land, all kind of things related to the environment. Similarly, if you look at the people factors, it is social variable okay, in terms of equity, society, health, well being, quality of life. Okay. So, whether as an organization you are going to contribute to ensure, in addition to your economic uh, variable, uh, profit or productivity, in what we are going to contribute to the growth and development of the people and planet both. So, that it leads to sustainable development of the world right that is very very important. Okay. Now, you will you, you will find in the three words like the extent to which it is it, this is related to viability whether you can wear it in terms of cost and also whether going for equitable equity right. So, these are the three terms which is related to these three variables which are leading to sustainability. Now, the question is that if you are using this triple bottom line parameter to define the role of people, uh, HRD department for the organization and its people to ensure that there is a better interaction for sustainable development. It means that they are not only going to uh, organize training and development program or interventions to ensure better performance by the organization that is related to profit, but at the same time they also organize going to organize program to ensure that your organizations engage in those uh, say uh, activities which is going to raise the quality of life of the people okay. by engaging in certain activities like corporate social responsibility where they are going to help people in terms of their health education creating resources for the society which could be used by them out of the profit right and that is why you know that Indian government has made it mandatory is under, under the companies act to spend at least 2 percent of their profit on CSR activities. Okay. So, this CSR activity also encompasses partly 
this the responsibility towards the environment and this is what we know as environmental social responsibility. So, it does not include only CSR that is corporate social responsibility, it means the responsibility of the corporates for the society and community to increase their quality of life, but also ensure that the environment the responsibility related to the environment is taken care of by the organization. Right? Since they are going to exploit resources, natural resources from the environment, they need to ensure its sustainability in the long term and also need to ensure that they are able to maintain water and air quality, energy conservations, how they are going to make use of the land, right? all kind of things, all kind of issues will come under that. And that is why we have to ensure that these kind of things are taken care. So, how we are going to see that HRD is going to help in developing ethical behavior. Okay? So, we are going to use a epistemology basically, it is a conceptual framework okay, uh, where we are talking about values, okay, two dimensions of epistemology of values, which relate to uh, basically at the idea of ethical wholeness are fragmented, whether ethically or integrated or you have fragmented values. right? So, this is related to the extent to which a person believes their own ethical values to be unified whole or to a greater or lesser degree is a, a variable set. right? Now, the other thing is that whether concerns a person's belief about the holistic or fragmentary nature of wider cultural field in which they live and work. Okay? So, that talks about the fragmented values. right? So, I, you are going to have an idea of ethics, okay? well, that is your personal or whether you are going to have an idea of ethics, which is going to vary across cultures, right? which is more fragmented. Right? So, al along these two dimensions, it has been uh, identified and the three major variables that have been identified across different set of people, those who are moderns, non-traditionalists right, are traditionalists and postmodernists, right. Now, along these three variables if you look at principles, policies and aporia, uh, principle is basically the standard that is to be observed, a requirement of fairness or justice or some other dimensions of morality. So, principle is related to fairness. Okay. And then policy, what is your goals and objectives? Set out the goals to be reached, for example, improving the social, economic, and political things, right. Then aporia state which exhibits exhibits a higher degree of fragmentations of personal values. Right? Now, if you look at these three dimensions and these four, you will find certain quadrants here, at least uh, 12, right. If you follow certain uh, principles, okay. As a modernist, basically, then you try to criticize upon this, right? Because then you are going to criticize whether the, uh, it is fair or not, whether it is justifiable, especially using the dimensions of moralities, right? So you are using a standard to criticize what is happening. Okay? If you are non-traditionalist, then you are a called a guru, right? But if you are a traditionalist, then you try to mentor them. It means you are trying to see that people follow these kind of things. And being a postmodernist, okay, well, that is the latest thing. Then you act as an intellectual okay, because you think these standards are something that need to be re-looked into. Right? So, you keep on criticizing these kind of things and see that these standards of fairness had to be re-examined. Right? Similarly, if you look at policy accordingly, uh, your, role uh, uh, your role across these four dimensions is going to change and also for aporia it means that if your values are fragmented then how are going to behave. Right? Whether you are going to follow certain rituals or want to counsel or become cynic in nature or you want to bring a change in the game itself. Right? So, based on these things it has been identified that you are going to work this and this is basically a theoretical framework that has been developed to explain how you are going to behave ethically depending upon the context and these three dimensions. Right? So, based on this uh, you will find that you are going to behave in four different ways. Now, what we have just discussed is this part. Okay. Now, in the extremes of this you will find four different kind of characters or instances like you act like a prophet. Okay. It means that you have your own vision of ethics and you are not going to change yourselves. Right? For example, if you are very rigid so far as your religion is concerned, so you are going to see it are everything from the guidelines that is provided by your religion. Okay. So, your ethics is would be unchangeable right? and you are not interested to put logic or debate on that. right? 
then if you are a quite it is uh, if you are a very very modern intellectual and you want to criticize the uh, this uh, if you are here this part especially here probably then you are known as quietists it means that you disengage from these kind of ethical issues right similarly if you the, uh, look at the other stream here okay then you are very very subjective okay this is the questioners uh, ethical subjectivism may lead to ungrounded diversity right and finally you have rhetorics okay you have to try to accommodate okay because you need to stay in the game okay and then you are going to lose your morality okay so on the one extent you will find that you try to protect it at all cost and here you are going to lose it here you are going to see that yes you have your own things and here you don't have at all right it means that you disengage from ethical problems so these kind of uh, uh, actually analysis can be done to identify that where do you stand when it comes to look at ethical behavior of the people by identifying these things you can see what needs to be done right so the strategies that can be adopted by the hr persons is that they need to make aware the people and see how they can develop positive attitudes for sustainability okay and how are going to create and develop a culture which supports sustainability not only sustainability but people engage in csr activities not only people but organizations also and adopt ethical behavior right so you need to develop a more responsible culture like having competencies and mindsets among the people so you need to bring about a change in the mindset when it comes to developing a culture which is more prone to these kind of activities okay and similarly you also need to foster reflection creativity continuous learning and these kind of things okay so so that you are able to promote a culture of learning so that you are able to understand and appreciate these kind of things right and that is how we are going to embrace these kind of things now what we are going to discuss gradually is that how you are going to look at the role of hrd so we have a critical perspective here you know that if you look at the role of the hrd in the organization okay uh, and you will find that the root, roots of hrd is basically in social sciences or humanities okay because hrd is a uh, interdisciplinary subjects where you have uh, say subjects like economics sociology psychology political science right anthropology the roots are there so it has its root in social sciences okay and basically these social science sciences uh, propagate the cause of well being of the people and the organizations okay so the idea is that how you can develop human potentials okay but what actually happens you have probably forgotten forgotten this basic aspect of your work where you are supposed to work for developing human potential which leads to better well being okay but organizations for the purpose of profit are using these interventions or hrd to see that how they can uh, intervene through their processes to make people more productive right isn't it and that is why you know that hrd has been described as an instrument of corporate profit maximization agenda most of the organizations have this agenda when they are talking about hrd because they use that roi perspective return on investment perspective to see that how hrd can be used to improve their profit improve productivity of the people right so probably uh, you will find some kind of contra contradiction especially when you look at the roots of the hrd which basically talks about developing human potential okay and well being to making them a competent person to perform well which leads to better productivity right and that is why it has been criticized okay so you have to see that you need to train people or you develop certain practices okay so that people are able to understand and become aware about what they uh, what their responsibility is not only for the organization as a profit maximizer but also to the individual to the environment to the society right and that is where hrd can play a better role and that's why that hrd has been sometimes criticized because they only work on the agenda of maximizing profit for the organization okay and forget about the basic values and systems which need to be developed in the people so that they are able to understand and comprehend things 
related to these kind of issues. So, after this critical perspective, we are going to see that yes, what is what kind of model could be used basically when we are trying to relate CSR, CS and ethics. CSR we will discuss separately. So, it will have uh, basically uh, impact on how you are going to create awareness about these issues. So, that those who are in say in an organization, you tell them that whatever activities you are going to do, how it is going to affect the society, the environment and these kind of things and whether you are behaving ethically or not, if you are not behaving ethically what will happen. Right, and what kind of interventions need to be planned okay, to create ethically and socially responsible culture in the organization. So, HRD has a role to play to develop a culture, so that people are going to behave in an ethical and socially responsible manner and that is what this model talks about. So, we have to see that how it is going to relate this. Okay. So, you are going to develop and create a culture of ethics and responsibility. So, then you see that how individual environmental and organizational factors interact with each other. Okay. So, what is the role of HRD in the process? Okay. So, this is basically related to the individual, his characteristics, his personality, his morality and his capital knowledge and skill base, which helps or basically leads to developing certain habits, okay, which they use to practice okay. and that becomes a part of the culture of the organization okay, which leads to developing a culture of whatever you call it in the organization. Okay. Now, when HRD intervenes and this is going to influence this practice, how are going to use your strength to practice certain something which is going to be more ethically and socially responsible things. Now, this also comes to into the picture and when it is to be developed, you are when you are going to develop people and their values, basically you have to make them aware about this, about the society and the environment in which they are going to operate. right? So, that when they are going to develop their habits, it is going to be influenced right? and this society and environment is also going to influence their habits right? in different way. For example, you know that uh, as a norm of the society, you know that we are going to worship trees. So, it becomes a part of the character of the individuals right? and then you adopt a certain practices, where you want to follow these kind of habits. right? So, the HRD interventions can be planned to ensure that you follow those practices to create a culture, which is going to be helpful in developing a ethical and social, uh, socially responsible behavior. Right. So, that when you act, you are going to take certain decisions or in your activities also, you are going to behave in a way that is either ethical depending upon what kind of things you have in your background or ethical behavior. Right. So, this is the relational model, we, we try to relate these things and how HRD interventions is going to mediate in the process to create a culture to ensure that you are going to develop an ethical behavior in the organization. So, now we will are going to discuss some of the research uh, uh, literature that in what way HRD and business ethics are related. right? So, the HRD profession has a responsibility to create a profession that behaves in a morally responsible manner, a lot of studies have been done. Then all aspects of HRD practices have ethical implications. right? and the choices will reflect directly on the personal integrity and credibility of the practices. So, what kind of decision you take, how, why you have taken that particular alternative as a decision, okay, it is going to affect your behavior in the sense that whether you are behaving morally, ethically and it also shows your integrity and credibility right? as an individual, when you are going to make certain choices. Similarly, you also need to educate top managers, so that they better understand and the importance of ethics and this is integrated in the business. It means, it becomes a part of our strategy that every activities, all activities okay, must follow certain ethical norms and behaviors okay. and this is and they have used a term which is known as ethical stewardship. That means, these are the people who are going to inculcate a culture of ethical behavior among the people. Okay. It means, these kind of practitioners 
have to see that people are able to develop the ability to ensure that people have those ethical and social behavior and uh, socially responsible behavior okay and ultimately you have to see that the practitioners need to develop the ability to influence key stakeholders in the process okay whether it's consumers whether it's suppliers whether it's society a community okay so that you they know that yes you are behaving your organization is behaving in a very ethical and socially responsible manner and for that you are going to plan a lot of hrd interventions like training diversity training right we have already talked about it so you must uh, uh, for example you could, uh, could need to make them understand that what is the difference between a gift and bribe okay sometimes gift is given as a bribe right in indian culture it is very popular thing so that is your need to make a difference then you can go for diversity training also to address inequities across backgrounds okay and you are going to challenge the employees own prejudices and assumptions right similarly you need to create a culture nurture the culture of the organization encouraging social networks across different uh, groups of the employees as a part of your diversity initiatives right so this kind of interventions by the hrd can be planned and then later evaluated to ensure whether it is going to be successful or not thank you very much